Hi, thank you for joining us today at the Smart City Ottawa event, the next generation of pool compliance. My name is Rebecca Wormleiden. I'm one of the co-founders here at Zendelity. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. I'm anxious to um, hear your thoughts and your perspective and challenges as it relates to pool compliance. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanna kick off today's session by really touching on what brought us here today. So this past summer, we had the opportunity to participate in the Hub 350 LSPARC Living Lab program. This was a program that was designed to bring together Canadian businesses with local businesses for the purpose of testing our technology to help strengthen and accelerate our route to market and really help strengthen the Canadian economy in our, in our future. During this program, we had the opportunity to work with Lapine Apartments. They own six luxury apartments here in the Ottawa area. Absolutely beautiful place if you haven't seen them. And as part of working with them, we set out to digitally transform form pool compliance in an effort to um, ensure that they had the confidence that everything was being done to protect their guests and have the data so that they could demonstrate to the regulatory authorities, Ottawa Public Health when, when required. While going through this, it was determined that Ottawa Public Health still required a physical signature on the pool compliance checklist every day. And it was at that point that we offered, we started to champion this cause. We believe that relying on a phys physical signature to ensure compliance is really exposing operations to risk. And we want to change that because really the reality is, is I can sign a piece of paper anywhere I want. So we have no idea if the job was ever done in the first place. So it was through that we were able to uh, put a proposal forward through the mayor's innovation table, which brings us today. So thank you again for taking the time and exploring this journey with us. So <clears throat> let's take a look at pool compliance. So the average uh, class C pool would, would require a minimum of about 48 different data points collected on a daily basis in order to demonstrate improved compliance. Everything for are the safe, uh, proper is the water testing quality, then multiple times a day is the water clean and the lights. At the end of each day, the piece of paper is physically signed to demonstrate or ensure compliance. And then that piece of paper is stored in a binder of someone's desk. This is the practices used across most organizations today. The problem is, is that when we look at that data and we try and use that data in order to mitigate or reduce our risk, it's very difficult. The data itself is often inconsistent. Um, to people looking at and understanding different requirements. The data is unstructured. So our ability to access and use that data to make more informed decisions is complicated and time consuming. And we have no idea if the data was operationalized. Did they write, if, they, if the water, if the pH level did fail, did they take action? We don't really know what happened or where. The reality is, is that pool compliance form could be printed and completed anywhere um, an individual sees fit. They don't even need to be in or near or around the pools. But the truth is, is, is pool compliance is a growing concern for organizations and operations that have um, are able to provide a pool to their customers and to their clients. Um, at the end of the day, while it's a beautiful benefit to share with our customers, you know, you've got legal liability, duty of care um, to protect the people from, you know, water related illnesses that could come up. A pool that's not properly maintained can expect to see the, the equipment life expectancy decrease by as much as 50 percent. Not to mention that there's a loss of revenue. If our customers hear about poor water quality, poor quality, I'm gonna, you know, I'm not gonna use that facility. And then of course we're faced with increased costs. If we do have to settle a claim, if we have to, if something breaks, all of that results in insurance premiums and insurance premium increases. So ensuring compliance of your proper of your pool and all the activities is really important to an organization's bottom line and to their reputation and their costs. At the end of the day, whether you're looking at pools or whatever, it all comes down to a commitment to duty of care. Every operation and organization, public commercial business has a duty of care to the customers that it uh, services and to the employees that it relies on. And duty of care means looking at all aspects of that operation and ensuring that everything has been done in order to reduce and to mitigate risk. When we think about managing duty of care and, and what this actually translates to, it, it's important to, to consider that there's thousands of pieces of equipment, just like the equipment that's used to maintain your pool, that must be maintained and, and ensure that it's readily available and functional if we're going to keep the people safe. In order to ensure all that equipment is functioning and, and the water is testing proper, properly, there's hundreds of operating procedures that are put in place every day so that everyone understands exactly what needs to be done and no one drops the ball. When we think of duty of care, it's not just a single individual, the pool department, who plays a role in reducing risk. It's all the frontline teams that play a role in running that facility that play their part in reducing risk and protecting the people and like, just like in the pools. And we need all of those people to be doing their things. 
And the challenge is, is that when we look at it, it's still 99% of the time, all of this is being managed with paper. So it's exceptionally difficult to have confidence that everything's actually been done to reduce risk and to, and to keep people safe. This is important because duty of poor duty of care translates to an unsafe workplace, worker burnout, inefficient operations, which in turn translate to increased costs across the board from employee turnover to equipment life cycles, wasted resources, um, insurance costs. The downstream effects to poor duty of care can be felt across the entire organization, right through to customer loyalty and sales success as it negatively impacts our brand and what our customers perceive of us. The important to challenge, uh, thing to consider as we look at duty of care, as we consider um, physical operating compliance is that those of us in the physical um, operating facilities management space are undergoing a transition that needs to be carefully considered as we move forward. And, and that is navigating the transition of one generation um, retiring out and a new generation joining the team and taking their role in leading the organization. Not only do we need to be mindful of loss of institutional knowledge from those individuals who are retiring out, but those new employees coming in have expectations around technology and simply handing them a piece of paper in order to do their job is not going to be considered acceptable and is not going to enable you to recruit top talent. Not to manage, not to mention that paper brings with it training disruptions, loss of operating data, a lot of risk. So it's important that we take a look at not only is duty of care uh, important for our operations and our success and our, and our bottom line results, but recognizing that the market is changing and that as organizations, we need to adapt so that we can be prepared and continue without missing a beat. In theory, offering and building a quality duty of care program is simple, isn't it? It's just about making sure we have the right people in the right place at the right time, that they're following the right procedures, and that those procedures are being evaluated based on the right policies. Unfortunately, this is an area that is easier said than done, especially when we're relying on paper. While there is technology out there that has been in, is being put in place, the, the journey from a compliance perspective is, is um, been an interesting one and has taken us on a few tips and turns. So if you think about it, there's many people, as we've talked about, most people today, <clears throat> Most people today from an overall operating compliance day are still reliant on paper checklists and logbooks. There are still filing cabinets galore all over the organizations that contain all of this important safety operational data. There are a few people who have moved specifically when it comes to asset management into the realm of, of spreadsheets and the like, which is still better. It's capturing data, but once again, can be completed everywhere. Doesn't offer a tremendous amount more value than over top of, of paper-based forms. There's also, from a health and safety perspective, there is technology out there and even maintenance and management software that is available that comes from audits and, and inspections. But what's important to consider when we look at um, audits and inspection software as it relates to the requirement around physical operating compliance is it really just provides a single snapshot of a moment in time and doesn't provide any context about how long have we been out of compliance, what resulted in the compliance, any of the other questions we don't know because we're only looking for that data and collecting it at inspection time. And then of course there's technology that's got QR and, and barcodes. My, you know, I will say to those of you that, that are considering, you know, keep in mind, I can take a photograph of a QR or barcode. Um, so really I can still complete that activity from anywhere I've got access to, to a phone in that photograph. So really at the end of the day, while we've invested in all of this technology, how much further ahead are we from a compliance perspective? Are we, can we really be that much more confident of compliance or is there still the same gaps that we've just you know, put technology as a bandaid and we haven't really been able to solve that foundational problem of making sure the day in, day out, everything is consistently done to reduce risk. The other big evolution that you'll see is also around the building automation systems. And it's important to note that we're not sitting here before you talking about wanting to change your building automation systems. Um, I would say that, that, the, that you still, we complement them. A great example is again at Lapine, while they have a state-of-the-art building automation system in place, they still pay their, their property manager to go in and inspect those, uh, their, their mechanical room every day to collect additional data points that are not covered within the building automation system, which brings us to us, which is really all about changing the equation and making sure that our solution um, manages and ensures compliance from the get-go. So what is this next generation? So um, we have designed a solution to get ahead of the problem and make sure that day in, day out, 
everything is being done across your property in order to reduce risk and to keep the people and your employees protected. We do that by making sure the right people are in the right place at the right time, that they're following the right procedures, and those procedures are being evaluated based on the right policies. We saw this during COVID where public health was changing the operating requirements, if not on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. You can imagine what it would have been like for those teams that were trying to ensure that they were doing, following all of the procedures to ensure compliance. They had no idea what version they should be following at any given time. It created so many potential points of failure with, the, with all of the different version control issues. And then we need to make sure that the, the procedures are being completed and evaluated based on the right policies, because as we grow and evolve, of course, things are changing. So with our solution, by getting ahead of the problem, we can help reduce risk, making sure that everything's done day in, day out. We can help optimize your resources by making sure that people aren't willy-nilly doing whatever is required, that they're consistently delivering upon expectations, saving you time and resources so you can put it into more value-add activities across your operation. And then ultimately making sure that investment in that facility is protected by making sure that people are in the right place at the right time, they're following the right procedures, and they're being evaluated based on the right policies. So command center consists of a mobile application that is used to guide users through the operating procedures that need to be completed. We leverage near field communications, NFC, to uh, tie compliance directly to the asset or the physical location that we're managing compliance against. And then we have an, a management portal that is used to um, create your procedures, to run your reports, to monitor progress in real time and the like. All Now all of your compliance data is truly at your fingertips. So let's come back to that pool example why we're here today and, and, and just look at how digitally transforming what we do today. So it's not changing. We're not talking about changing what you do. You still need to collect the required data and do the required operating procedures that are needed to keep us safe. But we make it easier and more effective to manage and track and ensure that everything's been done. So in essence, we take those 48 different data points that need to be collected and we create, we digitally transform it and we put it into the hands of the property manager so they understand exactly what needs to be done. Now they're guided through a detailed list of exactly what needs to be done, what data needs to be collected, where they need to go, when they need to be there. It's all at their fingertips. There's no misunderstandings of responsibilities. And of course, we tie that compliance down so we know the person was actually within the proximity, was in front of the fire extinguisher, in this case, was in, in front of the pool test kit to ensure that they were physically able to do the work that's needed to reduce our risk. And management has a real-time view of that as it's being completed in real time. So they can take immediate corrective action if something is noticed to be out of alignment. We collect 27 um, and more different data, uh, data types, and we manage those types by your own business rules. So you define what's important, when you want to be notified, and that notification is happening in real time as you go. So you don't need to worry about issues being forgotten. You don't need to worry about issues or data not being operationalized and used. It's immediately uh, acted on. So we can once again, take that immediate correction action. And now when the authorities arrive, whether it's public health to check the pool compliance or the fire code, uh, the fire inspector to check fire compliance, we have all of that data at our fingertips. So we can pull it up and show exactly who did what, when, where, and how. So all of that's available to you. You don't need to go searching through binders in order to answer questions and demonstrate that you've done everything you're impossible to prove your duty of care. And again, it's not just about pools, right? There are thousands of pieces of equipment and procedure and hundreds of procedures that need to be considered every day. And by digitally transforming that, not only are we going to reduce risk by making sure all of those jobs get done, but we're going to help optimize your resource and help you save time and money uh, by making sure that it's done efficiently and giving you fast access to that data so you can make a, uh, immediate corrective actions. At the end of the day, you're in the, in the people business, the people that you serve, the employees that you rely on, uh, it's the people business. And to keep those people protected, we need compliance and we want to help protect your people. The impact on your people is felt across the board when we take a different approach to compliance. Not only can we help uh, with your workers' optimization and satisfaction, protect that operational knowledge before it gets lost um, and help recruit the next generation employees, but it help from your customer's perspective to give them confidence that they can be, that they understand that, you know, the job was done and you have, you feel you have invested in it, you can prove that that job was done. And then of course, for all of us as a community, as a city, um, the more that we local Ottawa or local areas can be compliance, the more we stand out from the competition and can grow and exceed all stakeholder expectations. But of course, it's not just about people. We know that it's also about the bottom line results. And, and again, the beautiful thing about changing our perspective, it's not about not doing what we need to do. It's all about, we don't save time and resources by eliminating 
our, those procedures, what we do is we save time and resources by making sure that it was done effectively and having the data to prove it, which saves from your bottom line. Uh, overall, at corporate perspective, we can help protect your brand and reduce your risk and liability. From an operations side of the fence, again, it's all about saving time and optimizing those resources. I would estimate that we could easily save your average uh, manager, operations manager, two hours a day from having to go and find and collect and consolidate all of the data that they need in order to do their job on a daily basis. And for all those employees out there that are that are capturing the data and putting it into databases so that it can be used and accessed, we can make sure that process is so much more efficient so we can use it towards more value add activities. On the flip side of things, when things do go bad, which you know it's not a matter of, of if, it's a matter of when, for those that have invested in command center and have that data at their fingertips, from our corporate services, finance, reducing liability, the risk of slip and falls, the risk of a fine, a penalty. From a legal perspective, we can make it simpler to defend claims when something does go wrong by giving you access to that audit proof operational data so you can prove exactly what you did to defend the claim. And then from a human resources perspective, it's about optimizing those resources, um, about making it simpler to negotiate with unions, to um, recreate, re recruit and train individuals and really allow you to extend your brand to include duty of care. Together, we believe that we can make Ottawa a safer uh, city to live, work, and play in. Our goal is simple. We're Today, we're here talking about pools, but there's a much broader opportunity across all facets of safety that there is an opportunity for, for change and for improvement, and we want to work with our counterparts in the city to, to do that, to accelerate across all businesses. And together, we believe that in doing so, we can make Ottawa a safer place to live, work, and play representing a competitive differentiator for us and, and the city. Our next steps, um, for those of you that may not be aware, um, Ottawa, Public Health, Ottawa Public Health or FIRE has identified that um, starting July 1st, there will be fines associated with false firearms. So we're looking to bring together a panel of experts in uh, the June timeframe to discuss what that looks like, what that means to our businesses, and of course, how we can help uh, reduce that risk by digitally transforming the barcode. So where do we go from here? We understand as an operations team, everybody's swamped. You've got more than enough work to do. Your to-do list is a mile long. You've, you're already short on resources and there's not enough hours in the day. I respect that and I understand that. We want to, we've thought about it. We want to help you. So we have partnered with a company called The NetEffect. The NetEffect is Canada's um, digital transformation experts when it comes specifically to building construction and operation. They've got a team of individuals with decades of experience in this space and are here to bring that experience to help us so that we can uh, help yourself so that you can get up and running and start delivering value to your business quickly and efficiently. They have a strong understanding of internet um, institutional operations and are very much committed to uh, the success of our customers. They bring value across the whole spectrum. So right from um, helping to find strategy and planning, where do you start? What operating procedures should you be looking at? Um, all of that to working with you to designing the system and articulating the procedures to physical implementation, um, getting everything set up and tested uh, right through to the ongoing on uh, onboarding and training, not only of the software itself, but of course the operating procedures that uh, you're transforming is required. So a full system designed to support you in your journey as we look to digitally transform uh, pool compliance and all physical operating compliance requirements. As a thank you for attending today's session, um, we're offering a 50% off the first 50 compliance endpoints uh, that a customer wants to try out. Just have to reference this promo code that you see on the bottom of the slides and uh, we'll be happy to chat and help you out. Uh, we have a team of people that are here and available to support you from, um, from Zendelity's perspective. Of course, there's Dave McCready, my co-founder and myself. And then we have Isan Yusuf on our team who is um, our expert in everything and, and will help us address and identify um, what you need to be successful. And then we have our team at uh, the Net Effect. We have Craig Kirst, CEO and uh, founder, and then Richard Morin, our client advisor. So we are fully committed to helping you on this journey and ensuring your uh, successful outcomes and delivering value to your business. So of course, as I said, there's lots of different directions that we could go in. If you're interested in a demo, these are just some of the, the sample demos that we could do for you quick and easy um, if you're interested and want to dig in it. But of course, uh, the options are endless. It's really defined by you and your operation, what, um, where is compli compliance keeping you up at night? Um, what is challenging? And let's digitally transform that so we can help deliver value right away to your business. 
So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your time for joining us today. I look forward to connecting with you and uh, take care. We'll chat soon. Thanks. Bye.